welcome to the Filmcast's review of Shazam! Fury of the Gods. I'm going to read the plot summary from IMDb. The film continues the story of teenage Billy Batson, who upon reciting the magic word Shazam, is transformed into his adult superhero alter ego, Shazam. End quote. You said it three times, really? and now he's going to appear. So. <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, not the most detailed plot summary there, but perhaps appropriate. I like, uh, okay. uh, I li- I like any... Any summary that uses uh, three sentences or, or a long, uh, <laughs> more words to say what could have been said in very, very <laughs> few words. It's a movie about Shazam. Yes. M- more Shazam. The, more yeah. Shazam. Yeah. You get more Shazam in this Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> now, when Shazam was released in 2019, uh, I actually was pleasantly surprised by this movie. You know, I, I think we no, all were. Yeah. I have no attachment to this franchise at all mm-hmm. uh, emotionally it's not like something i really uh, adored growing up or anything like that and what uh david sandberg was able to deliver with a screenplay by henry gaden was a pretty heartfelt story of this kid mm-hmm. billy batson um trying to find love and family in this world uh with a fairly amusing performance by zachary levi and uh, a decent villain with mark strong not you know pretty, pretty mark standard strong as- a villain Pretty, <laughs> pretty standard it's, as far as villains go, you know. But yeah. like nothing, you know. Literally Mark, playing Mark Strong. Mark again. Strong gives Mark good Strong villain in kick ass. You Mark know? Strong in Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> yeah. Man, he gives good villain, and so uh, mm-hmm. of course, uh, it, it, many elements of the movie prove to be irresistible. So that's why I like seeing Mark Strong in Tar so much. Yeah, yeah. very just, not just Mark, little, Strong, Mark Strong. Mark Strong, you know. Little Mark weak. What was more Mark? <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, at the t- same time that Shazam came out, did pretty well. A bunch of other DC movies came out, did pretty well. There has been chaos unfolding over at Warner Brothers. <laughs> Multiple <laughs> regime changes uh-huh. uh, and a complete reworking of what it means to be in the DCU. So it is with great apprehension that I come into this movie wondering, like, what is this movie's place in the DCU? Can it deliver a satisfying individual story regardless of any of that nobody I told this you, movie no, nobody told this movie that there was reworkings at, at yeah. the wb Listen, they're in philadelphia <laughs> there's all this other stuff happening in the world but they're just in philadelphia guys yes it's all they're seeing it's very m night Shyamalan-esque in terms uh-huh, of uh-huh. Uh, in terms of how isolated it is for everything else everything else happening in the world mm-hmm. uh but all that said to vinger hardwar did you find this to be a worthy follow-up to 2019's shazam you know what I did. And it's weird because I think I I have been seeing a lot of negative reviews for this movie. And I think you're kind of maybe cursed when you introduce something that's so new and refreshing to, I think, an increasingly stale superhero formula. Um, And the DC stuff, we just didn't know what to expect because so much so much of it was like hit or miss. But I think um, the first of Zam was a huge surprise. It proved that David S. Sandberg could also do a big superhero movie also proves what we've been talking about horror directors make really great superhero film directors like that genre the same like genre pacing the same sort of like reveals and everything kind of work out between genres there um i think this movie has the problem that guardians of the galaxy 2 has in that the first movie was so fun such a huge surprise and then it's like do it again sam well it's never it's never going to be the same but you know what i do like the tune it's playing like i think it is a perfectly serviceable kids uh, superhero movie with some really fun horror elements. I like, it's fine. I think it's perfectly fine. I really enjoyed it. I never felt bored while watching it. And I actually think um, this movie actually tries for something. It is emotionally grounded in a way because it's all about Billy Batson and his feelings of abandonment, you know, and his feelings of trying to have a hashtag family losing the hashtag family. And it's really like, that's really the core of this movie. And I think that, that really does carry its way all the all the way through, like the way characters act, the way the rest of the family and the other kids act. I think it all makes sense and they all feel like real genuine human emotions. So, yeah, I was I didn't I don't really care as much for Billy as a character, to be honest. But all those other kids, I kind of love them like they're just so much fun. And especially Jack Dylan Grazer as Freddie Freeman and his alter ego, Adam Brody. Um, I want to see Adam Brody in more things. Um, we will talk more about like what happens to him in this movie. Um I like all the kids. I, I the one girl who is the youngest one, right? The young kid who as an adult has to play as a young kid. I think 
is always funny to me. And I think the actress does a great job with that too. So the set pieces are fun. It's really funny at times. Like there are some great gags in this movie that I laughed at. And uh, yeah, I had a good time with it. it. It It's not the first Shazam. It can never be the first time. But I think revisiting this universe really made me glad, um, you know, that we got to see all these folks again. I, wa- I want to see more of this family for sure. Would not have guessed Devendra would be pretty okay with Shazam Fury of the Gods, but uh, I'm glad you liked it. Had a good time, Devendra. And speaking of hashtag family, Chris Morgan is one of the writers on this movie. He also has uh, yep. produced and written several Fast and Furious movies, if I'm not mistaken. F- funny or, that there is a Fast and Furious re- uh, reference right in front of Helen Mirren, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the wom- the F- actress who plays Magdalene Shaw... <laughs> uh, in Deckard Shaw's mom in the Fast and mm-hmm. Furious movies. It's a weird, weird situation. Very weird. There. Anyway, uh, Jeff, hopefully I didn't step in your limerick there. Uh, what do you think <laughs> about Shazam Fury of the Gods? Five lines about Magdalene Shaw. The, the garbage now. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many poems that I could tell him here and come on. Yeah. Uh, well, they, uh, <laughs> what I think about Shazam Fury of the Gods is best summed up in the form of this limerick. Mm. I think I liked the first Shazam, but this <laughs> sequel's so bad, I'm like, damn. Wow. Why did they repeat it? I'd like to delete it, the equivalent of movie spam. Wow. Jeez. Jesus. This movie had me <laughs> had me second guessing my like of the first movie. Mm-hmm. Uh it's the same creative team, and I'm like, they did they Am I remembering that right? Did I actually enjoy that movie? Have I been holding that up as one of the well, highlights? You of had the, DC? the surprise. You had the surprise of the first movie, right? I so, guess. I guess. Yeah. I just feel like nothing in this movie works for me. I was not on this movie's wavelength at any point, and I have. Well, I want to step back for a second. I want to say first thing I I thought when I watched this is. So recently, watched. Shazam Fury of the Gods, Creed 3, yep. Scream 6, Ant-Man. I just watched John Wick 4, yeah. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Jeez. Magic Mike's Last Dance, yep. right? <laughs> in all of those situations, I realize now in all of those situations, and it, it struck me most acutely starting Shazam Fury of the Gods, in all of those situations, I was like, what happened last time? What, what <laughs> happened? <laughs> <laughs> we really I'm need a previous. Like, like, yeah, there's no I, I previously there's no on. Previous, there should be a well, previously that's on. To do yeah. it. That's yes. my point. Is yeah. television shows do a previously on, but for some reason movies uh-huh. are above that. Like that is that is <laughs> beneath a film to actually. <laughs> do, but why? Why? It's a it's a courtesy to the audience. We, we need it. Television shows do like the fact that Succession is not above telling you a previously on, you know? And I'm sorry, Shazam Fury of the Gods, you are no succession. But I feel like at this point with with movie sequelitis and the, you know, and believe me, I know, you know, Marvel has 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 done this worse than anybody, but I think at this point, like, I have too many franchises in my head. I'm excited to go into Creed 3. I'm excited to start John Wick 4. I'm excited for all these movies. But when I sit down, I'm like, Wow, they're really expecting me to have recently caught a, a really know where we left the story off, you know. Anyway, so I, like I said, th- this movie, I I should maybe have gone back and rewatched Shazam before watching this. I felt like it was recent enough that I'd remember it, but it definitely made me start doubting the fact that I liked that movie because this, I'm gonna have almost all of the same problems that I had with Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. I feel Mm -hmm. like these two movies are the poster children for comic book movie pablum. You know, it is exactly what's wrong with comic book movies right now. Like none, nothing in this movie. I I really wish I'd seen the movie that Devinder saw because I was listening to him describe it. And I was like, I wish I thought all those things. I felt like none of this movie had weight. No, I, mm. None of the characters had anything they cared about. I have no idea what the villains are doing in this movie at all. The, everybody feels like they're playing dress up. No one feels like they're in an actual place at any at any time ever. Uh, it, it, it's like it's so 
No, it's a nothing burger. It's a complete nothing burger. And like Ant-Man and the Wasp, in that review, I said the same thing in that it's a competent, it's not an incompetent movie. It's like, it holds together structurally. It doesn't insult my intelligence particularly. And so in that sense, I kind of agree with Devinder that it's fine. But like, it's not, it is so forgettable. And so, like I said, it's like spam. It just, I just delete it from my mind instantly. And it makes me think like, was the first one that, it, the first one was fun. I have, I have some specific problems with this. One of them is there is a sort of teen romance that happens at the beginning of this movie that makes absolutely no sense. The girl likes the boy for no reason whatsoever. And then as we continue to learn more about the girl, it makes less and less sense that that happens at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and it is it's trite. It is badly written. It's, it's poorly executed. <laughs> My biggest like personal pet peeve about this movie, and I don't remember if I had it in the first movie, I may have, but it just may have been so fun that I didn't care. My biggest pet peeve with this movie is that Zachary Levi is doing this really fun, irreverent, jokey, young kid in an adult body, like big as a superhero thing. But the kid isn't. The kid who yeah. plays Billy Batson isn't doing any of the stuff that Zachary he's Levi is doing. He's not doing anything. He's not doing anything, to be honest. Like, so, I, he's like, a snore He's, to me. he's barely yeah. in the movie. But yeah. Zachary, well, yeah. but Zachary Levi is playing a young kid, and the young yep. kid is trying to play an adult. And yeah. Yep. There's no yep. point that I believe that that young kid behaves at any point like Zachary Levi is behaving in this movie. Because we yep. never see him do anything like that. The he's actor never who joking. Plays Freddie Freeman, Jack Dylan Grazer has that vibe. Like he is, yeah, like he, he, yes. he should has have the been vibe. Shazam. He should have been the star. Yes. He yes. should have been Shazam. Yes. 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 He, he, Zachary <laughs> Levi is doing that, yes. that gag. Mm -hmm. yes. And the kid is like, you know, wacky, yeah. quippy, yeah, he's and like fun. Goofy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it, it, it makes, at no point do I, like the fun of big or these kinds of movies is like, oh my gosh, the adult actor is playing a, a, a kid in an adult body. And I think Zachary Levi is 100% doing that. But that kid does, it's not that kid he's playing. He's playing some yeah, other kid. Yeah. It, this kid it, is a it, snooze. It, yeah, it, yeah. It's such a snooze. And the whole movie's a snooze. Like, dude, I, the, I, I could not wait for this movie to end. It, it like, it just, there's, it's a nothing burger. And there's this like, all of this God stuff that is, it, it just, just thrown it just feels like someone threw something at a wall it's like oh look all of the god stuff that you've ever heard of is in the movie for some reason it, it like what you know what is lucy lou doing in this movie uh it, it's it, uh, it's all, dude i just thought this movie was <laughs> So you don't like forgettable. it. Though. You don't like it. <laughs> so, but it's like it's uh, not uh, TLDR. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like uh, like you said it's fine, yeah, yeah. but like that's yeah. just not good enough. Uh, for uh, yeah. the uh, the effort, the talent, mm -hmm. the money that was brought to bear on this, like what what are we doing? You know what? I All will right. reassess my statement. I will say it's more than fine. I will say it's oh, <laughs> well, wow. so just to I, have a clear I'm, a clear demarcation I'm surprised here between I'm surprised that Devinder being yeah. so positive on, like okay. So Ryan Broderick, internet journalist, uh, who I uh, enjoy his work greatly over at the Garbage Day newsletter, he had a, a mega viral tweet recently where he said, uh, you know, the Captain America First Avenger, right? Um, the post credit scene, I think it's the post credit scene, right? Where, uh, so I'm going to spoil the post credit scene of, of Captain America First Avenger. He wakes up in some facility. And then mm -hmm. he like hears a baseball game on the radio, and then he's like, "Hey, um, I know you know uh, that baseball game's not real because I was there, so that can't be an actual baseball game." And uh, and you know, then he realizes he's actually been cryogenically frozen until he's in the future, and he busts out and he's in Times Square or whatever. You know, like it's actually great. One of the Isn't great. That, that's the final scene. That's not the post credit scene, I believe. It's, okay. it's one of the well, yeah. final scene, mid credit scene. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, you yeah. might you might be right. You might be right. It's the final. It's the final scene. Anyway, because so, you end on the shot of him in Times Square. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. You're right about that. You're right about that. But anyway, he was saying how uh, basically that scene is notable because it's one of the last times he can remember where a Marvel <laughs> character reacted to a physical object in a room. 
Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Like, yes. Like, what? Like, uh, like in in many Marvel films, it's like they're not even in the space that they're in, and so mm-hmm. like the fact that he's in an <laughs> actual room. And there's a physical object in the room there's that he's set. like he runs through seeing. a set. Yeah, yeah, he's walking through a set. He's reacting to it like that's notable, you know. Uh, and I do think that uh, we get a lot <laughs> of that kind of vibe, certainly with Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania, where it felt like yes, I, I, at no nothing, point, nothing, at no point real. do I believe yeah. any of these characters are yeah. in any of these spaces, right? The chair they are sitting on doesn't exist. It's all like, <laughs> yeah. Now I think this movie does suffer a little bit from that. Um, but it's not as bad as Quantum Mania, in my opinion. But it's it's still pretty rough. There's many scenes where it's like, uh, I don't actually believe this is a real space. It doesn't look real, um, and and that is a big problem. Now, uh, I I actually as you know, I'm going to try to take the middle line between the two of you and say it was fine. I think that per what Jeff's saying, like it does feel weightless. It does feel like super heavy CG, but. Uh, there are some pretty cool things in the movie that I don't think Jeff Kanata is giving it credit for. Okay, let me throw a few things out there. First of all, what I love about David Sandberg movies is, as you mentioned, Devendra, he comes from a horror director background. Yeah. He can't there's, help but be There's creepy. always going to be some yeah. really effed up stuff in the movie. There's always going to be stuff that's like really upsetting mm-hmm. in the movie. Um, and so there's a, there's a bunch of those things in this movie. <laughs> so as an example, um, the movie opens and you discover like, what the, you know, uh, Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren play these gods in the movie, right? And the movie opens, and you kind of learn very quickly that they have the ability to, like, whisper into someone's ear, and then, like, the person's eyes will become, like, truly, and cloudy, truly freaky. and then they'll yeah. become, like, a different human. Certainly That's something a... that could have they could have used more times than twice. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really cool concept, though, right? Like, I just love that Goes idea. nowhere. Ex- Goes absolutely, absolutely nowhere. Sure, but it's executed pretty well, and they use and they use it a few times, Jeff. They don't use it just twice, but you know, yeah, they use it a few uh, times. Yeah, I think that uh, whole opening sequence a couple the of times. opening sequence yeah. is cool. In, yeah. in that, at the it, end, you know, we'll talk yeah. about we'll talk yeah. about things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They try to compel yeah. one character, and his force of will is so strong they can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's and there's a bunch of like desi- like uh, I think in general, like the design of many of the creatures is pretty cool, and um, there's a there's a kind of Harry Potter version of Microsoft Clippy in this movie. Uh, that like, no, uh, dude, like I have a specific true. thing I want to say about that. Okay. okay oh like, let's wait to spoil it. That's a spoiler. Let's yeah. wait to spoilers. Let's <laughs> wait to spoilers. But I guess there's like, there's enough cool things in the movie that I'm like, oh, I, I can see how kind of potentially, uh, be, you know, based on the first movie, there's like some horrifying, I think it was like the seven sins in the first movie, right? Yep. And there, those are like pretty freaking horrifying things. Uh, as rendered in the first film. And I feel like there's enough of those kinds of things in the second movie that I'm like, all right, there's enough like meat here that I appreciate uh, kind of what David Sandberg is trying to do. Um, And I think that if I had watched this movie as a kid, I'd be like, oh, that's a great continuation of the Shazam Mm -hmm. story. This is very much, Uh, I think, directly a kid's movie compared to the first movie. Right, right. I think where the movie does fall down is the first movie really had a heart with the Billy Batson story that this one's missing. It tries to kind of fill that in with this kind of Billy Batson's relationship to his family. Doesn't work because Billy Batson is in the movie for about seven minutes. And also Billy um, Batson sucks. Like the, the, <laughs> the actor, as we have all said, like Asher yeah. Angel, sorry, buddy, but... Well, it's uh, not yeah. even the d- actor. Something. I think it's yeah. like, I don't know why that, that performance is the way it is. But, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, probably it, it may be like, there is some mismatch between what Zachary Levi is trying to do and what what Asher Angel is trying to bring to the role. But anyway, they try to fill it in with like Billy Batson's relationship to his adopted family. Doesn't quite work. That said, there are some cool elements to the ending that I really enjoyed mm-hmm. and some elements that were not great. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. But so so basically real mixed bag, definitely approaching quantum mania levels of roughness, but not quite as bad as quantum mania in my opinion. So I do think it's significantly better than what Jeff gives the credit for. So those are my thoughts. Um, but why don't we get to spoilers guys? Cause there's a bunch of things to discuss. Okay. So spoilers for Shazam fury of the gods starting right now. We are in spoilers for Shazam fury of the gods. So I liked little pen guy, Steve, I think little pen guy rules. Yes, yeah, Steve. No, that's a pretty cool. That's a pretty cool. It's funny. Design. It's, pretty cool. it's funny to me that the, the notion of this magical thing where you can ask it to summarize a a story for you and it it's chat gpt you guys 
We it have is. that it right is. now. You we don't need now. a magical pen. You literally, oh everything God. the magical Are pen you, does in this Jeff, movie. Can Jeff ChatGPT send a message with paper to anybody whose name you whisper, Jeff? I, no. I believe they call it email. No. Email, Davindra. It's called email. Jeff, email Jeff, in you, the forgotten realm. What is, yeah. where, where is the, where is the <laughs> childlike wonder? In you're like no wonder. The Jeff Canano, yeah. You're like a freaking old man, dude. Like. I'm an it's old a man. I don't know if you're pen. aware of that. It's a fucking it's a pen. pen that takes it's dictation, pen. dude. Like, I'm telling you, animate itself and do things like everything dude, that, that it does. That is it, everything that it does. A cool idea. Yeah, I just yeah. the <laughs> objectively has a personality. Point. Go ahead, Jeff. It, go ahead. Yeah, I, go. I, 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 I'm just trying to say that I thought it was funny that they're like, "Wow, we have this magical thing where we can ask it. To, what are all the Greek?" What are all the Greek bad guys and who are all the Greek gods? I'm like, you can, Bing does that right now, right now. You like don't need a magical pen; it will do exactly, wow. exactly. Microsoft what a magical is pen. sponsored by I'm, Microsoft I'm losing, over here. I'm losing my mind. Like, I, it's just like this is it's such a weird. First of all, this movie was made before ChatGPT was released. Yeah, yeah. And but secondly, also, the internet does not have this full history of what's what's going on <laughs> it, in this magical it, realm. It didn't come, come out before it was released. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah. the, the, the if, weird. I, and the if joke I of the made pen. a movie, if I oh made a movie, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting up like from a Jeff's magical pen. pen. Yeah. This is going on. Anymore? This is how the film cast ends over a magical pen in a Shazam movie. I just threw my headphones down and got up off the chair just now because I'm like, I have no this idea what's this even is, happening. We've, ten plus years, it's all over from the from the Jeff I, I GBT think, pen. I think what we've learned is Jeff Steve. has a secret se screenplay for Shazam 3, and uh, Jeff is just going to shit on any other Shazams. I just, GPT wrote it for me, and I was really, yeah. really ready to make it, it work. Just, I mean, why not even Google? Uh, okay, okay, whatever. Before what? I, Google what? I'm just saying it. You could also say Google does a similar thing. You well, know? he it said Bing does it because any well, Bing has ChatGPT in it. But anyway, okay, okay. That's why yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a fan of Bing, Dave. I'm just saying. I, know. I think it's funny. <laughs> a big I think it's out. funny. Yeah. It's not, I don't. I don't even think it's a flaw of the movie. I just thought it was very <laughs> funny to me. It's like if you're in a fantasy world, and you know, someone in uh, the in the world invents has a magical solution for something that literally. Everybody can do already. That's the Jeff, thing that's funny to me. Okay, but but the part of the thing that's fantastical is not asking a thing and getting answers. It's the fact that it's a pen that can write <laughs> things of its own volition and can fly the, around. The pen like has a that. personality. The, that is the fun. Nod. Yeah. It has yeah. a personality using like one little string yeah. of yeah. That's a cool design. That's, that's a cool, cool character design. The joke okay. is that it's very literal. It will record everything you say. And I yeah, think that, and that, 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 that was, was my, hilarious. My biggest Which is laugh what we've, of the all, movie. we've all had that experience yes. when dictating yes. into yes. a phone. Yes. My biggest laugh of right. the movie was when Helen Mirren is reading off like, the whole, the whole yeah. thing that was that was yeah. awesome great moment. only laugh of the movie but yes okay all right uh anyway that's not the biggest issue with the whole <laughs> film oh really jeff because it sounds like we just spent five minutes talking about it um it's because you guys were so offended that i would insult your favorite <laughs> friend steve the no, pen no, no, no. not that you insulted but that you would say it's because of chat gpt that it's invalid <laughs> okay all right we have to move on we have to move on uh okay so uh uh i do think that the ending could have been pretty cool. Like mm -hmm. if they hadn't had the gal. So spoilers for the movie, but and it's given away in the TV spot. Gal Gadot shows up, and uh, for no reason, no reason, kind of revives Shazam back from the dead. Okay, but like imagine if that scene didn't happen, right? Like if that had been where Shazam had died, uh, mm -hmm. that would have been that would have been cool. Like, like if they're gonna if they kill this character off, that's amazing. It's, in it's the second movie, it's actually like poignant when he's like saying yeah. goodbye to his family and like, and then he's like, "I'm gonna sacrifice myself." And it's like, yes, this is what the true heart of a warrior is. Like, oh, sure, like, sure, and sure. they set, did a pretty good job setting up the Philadelphia Dome, which is there for some reason. You know, like yeah. it's like, oh yeah, it's all all the pieces are there for him to give his life. Um, I thought that could have been cool, yeah. and then of course they completely undo it. I mean, I right come on. Scene. This is you give a horror director a dead body and like a fresh pile of dirt. He's just waiting. He's just waiting for the shot for the hand to come out of the dirt. <laughs> you know it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. at least have it be a post credit scene though. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know because it wasn't post credits in this case. Also, it is wild 
to think that this is the last we're ever going to see of Gal Gadot's version of Wonder Woman. Do you, do you realize that? Do, like, is that true? I mean, I don't know. We don't there, know that there to be true, no, do we? There is no other confirmed project in which she is in right now. So that could change. Yet, ja- yeah, that, that doesn't change. That mean. Change. But that it's like change. it's at this point, it is very possible. Like, there's no active development on Wonder Woman mm-hmm. three, as far as I understand. So, like, that that's this, why this I feel could, like this, this cameo. Empty, completely empty. This could very nothing. well be the end yeah. for Wonder Woman, which yeah. is like pretty shameful. Like that character it's, deserves a better ending than this. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. connective tissue to nothing. It's the mm-hmm. weirdest thing. It's like I said at the, when we started recording, nobody told this movie that the rest of the DCU is changing. You know, this, this the movie's like, of oh, power. Yeah. yeah. And then the, and then the actual post credit scene is like, we're making the Justice Society. It's like, no, you're not. No, no, you're not. No, I mean, no. maybe they, no, they could. Those are the characters mm. from uh, what's it? What's that other show? So I know. Yeah. yeah, Peacemaker, Peacemaker, Peacemaker. Yeah. None of that. I, I, do, I do love. Shout out to Mister Mind, who returns again in the final post credit scene. That was fun. Mm. That's a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, I, I just like how Jeff Kanata, uh, yeah, yeah, in any other movie would be freaking out. Guys, there's people from the TV <laughs> show in the movie oh i can't believe we live in a world where you can have tv show characters in a movie and it's like if it actually meant anything because <laughs> we don't know we just, we Every, literally a guy cuts. a guy stood in front of a lectern and was like everything's changing well i'm just saying he, st- <laughs> he stood in front of the lectern and he was like mm-hmm. yeah he literally before the movie comes out is is like we're wiping the slate clean and then this movie is like oh no we got all this connective tissue I don't know. Th- so things change. I, I don't understand. Last week, that guy was not directing Superman. Now he is. Now so... his now his wife is in the post credit scene of Shazam: Fury of the Gods. Oh, is that his wife? Huh. Yeah, that's, that's his sweet. wife. Uh, let's let's he, move past the think, Mr. Mind thing. Do you think James Gunn would put his wife in a post credit scene that he's not going to pay off in, Jeff in a movie like Jenna Fisher <laughs> in Slither? So. Yeah, I don't think yeah. so. I don't think so. Did All you guys right, see whatever. the the final uh, after credit scene? By the way, uh, I did not. Okay, so I got the uh, hell out. The return of Mark Strong. Yeah, and so Mr. Mind. At, at the end of Shazam One, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Mind shows up in Mark Strong's prison and is like, "Hey, voiced by David Sandberg, by the way. Together yeah. we can team up and rule the world." You know, like that's kind of what yeah. he says. This uh, will be paid off in the second movie. They said they did. It, they paid it, it off in the in, in the post credit. Should have stuck post, around, Jeff. <laughs> post post credit. Should have stuck around. Movie. Okay, because uh, uh, one of, one of the best jokes of the movie is um, Mr. Mind has this like grand plan. He's like, "I have little legs." I have to scurry everywhere. It takes me a while to get this plan <laughs> together. And that, sorry, that killed me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, uh, other uh, things. Kudos. Uh, That's great. Wonderful. Other things yeah. I like about the movie. Um, I I liked like the idea of uh, these creatures from mythology like visiting mm-hmm. Philadelphia and just completely killing everyone. Like th- again, like just it, it feels like Sandberg's horror movie roots informing this movie in a fun and scary and. Uh, terrifying mm-hmm. way like if i if i had watched shazam one or two as a kid i would be having nightmares about those movies in my opinion <laughs> shazam and, uh, one has a murder room sequence you forget that like where <laughs> people in a conference room are murdered that's what i'm by, saying yeah, that's yeah, the most yeah. horrifying scene in that movie yeah and Man. uh and this this you know movie also has like you know those things rampage your ground uh love the take on the unicorn you know like as like the most horrifying Jaman hansu talking about the unicorn as the most terrifying Good creature stuff. mythology. i think that's a that, funny that concept it's funny w- yeah way better if the unicorn doesn't look like a nightmare you know mm-hmm. uh Mm-hmm. If it literally is is the pristine, beautiful white rainbow I mean, thing, and it's still that's horrible, one way, way better. That's one way of doing yeah. it, Jeff. It's, way, it's yeah. a better way if of doing it. If this was Jeff's Shazam movie, <laughs> how, it would be a beautiful how, unicorn. How this is, uh, this is how Chev, awful yeah. is that? How yeah, awful was that uh, that 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 um, product pl- placement, though? Man, but that it was very weird. weird. It was hilarious. It was weird. Taste it was the weird. rainbow, motherfucker. It, that, yeah, yeah. No, but see, that is a funny line. That is a funny line. Unfortunately, you gotta set it up, Jeff. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't have to say Jesus. this. <laughs> you don't have to set it up by saying "taste the rainbow" the first time and then "taste the rainbow, mother." You you ruined the you ruined the joke of saying "taste the rainbow" by saying "taste the rainbow" the first time. It, 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 may, it, may, it may have been thirty seconds apart. It's it may like, have been contractual to have a good taste the rainbow. Yeah, that's the know. problem. I assume that was probably that's it. But the also, problem. The payoff was worth it. I think the payoff was worth it. Personally. Oh, uh, also the other thing that I like about this, you know, I'm just trying to point out some things yeah. I enjoy about the movie, Jeff. Um, but I like like kind of Rachel Zegler's powers of like rearranging things. Like at first, I that was, was cool. That was. I cool. was kind of confused. It's like, is she actually rearranging things, or is she just? 
Um, oh, here's another. By, by the that red character makes movie no thing. sense as, at all, though. Okay, let's. Get, I, I will get into. I, I want to hear your thoughts on that. But I want to say, speaking of David Sandberg's horror movie roots, I like that he just straight up had Dietrich Bader's character kill himself for absolutely no reason. Like, Poor Dietrich Bader. Dietrich Bader <laughs> just needs, walks he up. He needs on, more work, man. Dietrich Bader yeah. walks up onto the roof and he literally like c- commits suicide. And it's like. Yeah. That's never referenced again for the rest of the movie. Yeah, it's like it's, they, they it's just and it's scary. Him it's scary too. Hell. It's disturbing yeah. the way he does. Well, and they it, right? talk so, about how he bursts like a grape. It's like yeah, I was like, don't put uh, but that I was image like, in kids' heads. <laughs> that's the thing is like is like I just I like that. I, I, I when I watched the first exam, I was like, ooh, these tones are really clashing. But now I'm just like, you know what? Yeah, I, I am grateful for any superhero film that can make me feel horror. You know, like I'm a- anything. Is that that you hated that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, hate's too strong of a word, but yeah. Well, you I mean, weren't grateful I, for it, like you just said. <laughs> I'm grateful for any. <laughs> I like Sam Raimi. Like, there's very Sam Raimi stuff in that movie. Uh, that, yeah. that, those Sam Raimi stuff I really liked in that movie. So, anyway. Um, and probably my expectations were a little bit higher for that one than this. I'm going to put that out there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what about but, what about Helen Mirren's weird 180-degree flip for no reason at all in this movie? Yeah, I can't. I I can't no defend, reason at all. I can't defend. Uh, like... It's not no reason at all, Jeff. Like she's clearly <laughs> worried about Lucy Liu's character being completely drunk with power and betraying their original mission. But I will grant you that it is not exactly the most well laid track for this movie. To and also, off, so. maybe I, I think Helen Mirren was kind of the weak link here because I don't. I look at Helen Mirren in that armor and I do not feel fear as as threatening as she tries to be. Lucy Liu, I feel fear. You know, like I feel like that was per, perhaps a miscast there. Mm. All right, both well, of them feel like they're in a weird like the weird costumes that don't fit them in weird sets that they're not actually on both of them just i'm mm-hmm. like oh, i you you both have so much talent like why are we doing this Ugh. so jeff the rachel zegler character didn't work for you no uh you, you and it seems like you had stuff you wanted to say about that so i want to give you well, an opportunity she, you know she shows up immediately falls in love with our 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 main character kid for no reason at all no reason at all um and stays true and faithful to him for no reason at all. It makes even less sense when we realize she's 6,000 years old. And we have characters who comment on how that's icky. But like, yes, that it's not okay to just acknowledge the weird thing in your movie. That doesn't make it go away. It's now it's uh-huh. super icky. Like, why, is, why does she like that kid? Hey, Jeff, remind me to never show you the Twilight movies, okay? (laughs) Remind me never to show you the billion-dollar grossing franchise, the Twilight movies, okay? No, you're right, because (laughs) because the Twilight movies are a a defense of literally anything. Oh, yeah. Hot garbage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but let, let, let's be clear like she she had like a plan to not to like seduce it's, him it's early, literally a reverse she, she was trying to be a friend yeah yes, early Jeff, on it's a reverse she's it is all a that. setup it's a reverse she's all yeah. that okay yeah it kind he, of he, he couldn't she, deny, she's going in there yeah. she's she trying to get close to this family who she suspects mm-hmm. you know uh they all know the huge superheroes because yeah. she needs to get superheroes uh but then at the end of the day she's like you know when i took this bet you know i didn't know that i would actually fall in love yes uh, yeah it's That's a reverse literally what it is with yeah. a boy that's 5,980 wow. years younger than oh, her. Oh, you're big uh, Jeff, on math. I, I, hey, wow. Yeah, Jeff, never, never watch any vampire movies. Jeff, never no watch vampire any movies. vampire movies, okay? <laughs> never watch any movies where, uh, or, or superhero <laughs> movies for that example. Like, mm, mm. with, uh, oh, oh, never watch Wonder Woman, Jeff, okay? Because Wonder Woman's uh, fucking 400 years older than Steve, you know? <laughs> What the hell, man? <laughs> Never watch an accurate representation of Romeo and Juliet. I am Juliet's Romeo like well. it's losing yeah. my mind. You don't think that it's right now. <laughs> you don't, dude. Tell me, tell me, you think that 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 romance makes sense? Is well executed? You believe it? It's it's the most trite, poorly written. She, like he, he <laughs> she is trying to get in his good graces like uh, it's yeah. not okay. meant it's to be an organic it's not meant yeah. to be an organic romance <laughs> i'm but you just said now, that she finds herself in words. love with him oh my god yeah by the, by, at the of, end at the end at the she end. does it does kind the, of turn into one because i think that character is interesting <laughs> because she's like she's clearly like 
guys, we don't have to destroy this world. We don't have to go so hard. And I found that just kind of interesting. I liked having different point of views, even from the villain side of things, you know? Anyway, and there was a cool moment when she like, when Lucy Lee shoots the beam at her and she like yeah. rearranges the whole oh, city. Man. And then like the beam still is coming at her. That was amazing. I was just like, that was cool. That's, that was cool. Amazing yes, moment. that was cool. Okay. Jeff, yes. you've, you've said there's like three things that are good in this movie, okay? Like, there, so... Yes, there are three effect <laughs> shots that are very effective. <laughs> yes. I'm not... I said the movie was fine, but no, you I didn't. think it's Pablum. <laughs> no, I think you it's, didn't. I, I, said, I did over and over. I said I agree with the movie. The yeah. movie's fine, fine, but like, okay. what are we okay. doing? with this? But one, then I had to reassess my definition of fine <laughs> after hearing your review, Jeff. Yeah, so. yeah. I think that Ant-Man and the Wasp was, was like, on a certain level, fine, but like... It's just it's it. That's not good I, enough. I, I agree. It's it's a missed opportunity to do something a little bit more with these characters. And I think I think the big sin that the movie commits is it leans too far into the Shazam component of it. Like the mm -hmm. first movie was like this balance between Billy Batson and Shazam. Like and and that's an interesting concept of like a child being a you know no other superhero franchise is doing yeah. that right now we're like and also it's a children. group of kids and trying to wrangle a group of kids together as a superhero team impossible well, you, you, i think you, it's kind of funny how that works you do yeah. point you, you do point to one of my issues with this movie Devinger, which is that kids, you know, kids which is that uh helen mirren and lucy Liu are like you kids shouldn't have this awesome godlike power and i'm like mm -hmm. i gotta agree with the villains there i don't feel like giving <laughs> children giving What's a it? child the ability to nuke a city Mm. is uh is a great would you give children <laughs> nuclear weapons you i mean know, like... <laughs> uh, that sounds like we're rewriting history here because the only reason they had they got the powers was to like defeat the guy who was trying to destroy the city and the world no so, no but but okay yeah. but that that is over that's and over now you can now you, you know hand, now you want to take daddy, the powers back hand, hand <laughs> daddy back the nuclear weapons <laughs> yeah. It's the hand of over, baby. Come on, you can do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I think that mm -hmm. first, uh, the first sequence where they, first of all, they have the code word to assemble as a team. Kind of hilarious because they're trying to do it like under the nose of their parents and the the slow like awareness of the parents too to everything. I find that all funny. It's just funny. I like the parents too because they seem very sweet and they like these adopted kids. That whole bridge sequence, I think, is like a great. I can't imagine any other movie kind of doing it like that because these are kids in this role. They're not like trained. They're not like fully organized. They're still kids. Like they, you pre present them a basket of kittens in a car for some reason, they're going to go after the kittens first. And I think all that, I don't know. It just worked for me as a sequence and their problems as a family and as a team. Again, I feel like there's real character motivation here. One character wants to go off and do her own thing, go to college. You know, the parents are kind of worried about these kids. Like, to me, those all felt like grounded motivations, whereas there was no motivation for anything in Quantum Mania. Like, that was kind of one thing. It's like, oh, I guess we're in the Quantum Realm now. Oh, I guess we're on a sci-fi adventure now. Um, at least here, despite all the CG, despite, like, the mess of it, it feels, like, rooted in the characters. And that's really all I ask for. You know? I do think it's a step. I do think it's a step up from Quantum Mania. I also agree. Like I think the reviews were a little bit too harsh on it. Not that much harsh on it, but a little too harsh on it. Um, but that said, I, I think my opinion on superhero films in general has changed over time. You guys know, oh, in sure, sure. Batman v Superman. Batman gives a speech. <laughs> Batman's supposed to be the bad guy. You know, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, this this guy, uh, Superman. He can destroy the whole planet if there's even a one percent chance that that might happen. We have to treat it like an absolute certainty. And, you know, I think we're meant to view that as, like, unreasonable. But as I've mm. gotten older, I'm like, yeah, I, I think that guy's right. Like, no one should have this power. So when <laughs> no I see a girl, when I see a girl, like, being like, ooh, kittens, I'm going to take those instead of saving your life. I am terrified. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah. yeah, the implications of children having this power are terrifying to be terrifying. like, I think we're supposed to, as the audience, we're supposed to be like, tee hee, that's funny. And when I watch it, I'm like, Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu have a point. That's kind of my reaction to this. You, so, you've you've, you've anyway. gone full Zack Snyder now, Dave. 100%. That is the Zack Snyder position. Is that hundred percent? Yes. I mean, these, just, I'm, I'm these like characters Kevin, are I'm Kevin Costner in, in Man of Steel. I'd rather die yeah, than have yeah. you use your powers. Yeah. Basically, yeah. <laughs> the, the, these characters are a priori terrifying. They're just yeah. like on the face of it. The notion of a yes. Superman is a horrific 100%. notion. Yeah. I remember there's a scene in uh, the Amazon Prime video series Invincible where uh, – what's the main guy's name? The, the, the uh, J.K. Simmons character. He, like, goes uh, yeah. to this other planet. 
that's there's this other planet that's like invading Earth, mm-hmm. and he like goes to the other planet, and then he just like flies around like yeah a thousand destroys, times like back and destroys forth, the civilization. just completely yeah. Yeah. annihilates the planet because he can pass yeah. through anything, and it's just like wow, like su- it's true. Superman could literally destroy the entire planet in like about ten minutes if he wanted to. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um. So yeah, some ter- uh, basically you've, I'm saying you've arrived at 19. 19- scare me. <laughs> You've arrived yes, at 1990s. I hope they in hell. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> You've arrived at the 1990s postmodern superhero phenomenon. That, yeah. uh, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm finally where we were 30 years ago. That's right. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Uh, the entire right. X-Men plot line of rounding up kids, sending them to Genosha. That's where you are now. <laughs> yeah, yes, you're a striker. You're, 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 you're a Colonel Stryker. Stryker. You yeah. Picture me giving Senate testimony during an X-Men movie. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you should do. <laughs> All right. All right. Any other thoughts on Shazam: Fury of the Gods? Uh, no, I'm glad we got to okay. talk about it. This went, this review went places I did not expect. So <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, I, I now I just... understand that Jeff Kanata hates joy, um, hates hates delight. You know that thing. I, like, I, uh... I, I search for delight. I, I seek it out. <laughs> I want to find it. I, I that's I, I ask for more than just fine. I want. Mm-hmm. Like we we we're at the point now where we we've gotten all of this abundance of riches, and we don't need to just have another one. You know, and I know, listen, I understand how that sounds hilarious and, 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 you know, um, uh, yeah. um, hypocritical from somebody that is a huge fan of the Marvel films. But listen, I've turned on the Marvel films too because we, we can't, yeah. like, yeah. it's, we gotta, we can't just keep doing this, folks. We can't. You turned on one Marvel film, Jeff, to, to be clear. One. Uh, did you like Wakanda like almost Forever? 30. Did you like Wakanda Forever? I, don't I thought Wakanda Forever was not great. I thought yeah. it was not okay. great. I think there are great moments in it. I think there are great yeah. themes yeah. in it, but I thought yeah. it was overstuffed. And I think I, I I said there's just like it's it's unwieldy and not great. And I, what was the one before that? I don't think I would give a, a review of. I think that Doctor was Strange. Multiverse of Madness. That was Multiverse. Was the one yeah. before that. Oh, I like that one. I like that one a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, but yes, but yes. Uh, I mean, I this is a this is a, a problem is that it, it feels like these things are sort of just moving of their own accord instead of and 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 i mean what i loved about the phase one phase two phase three of 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 the marvel stuff is that it felt like it was all building to something and that felt special and and i I i'm also gonna put this out there i'm also gonna put this out there i haven't seen i have not seen john wick chapter four but I have heard it is one of the greatest feats of action filmmaking in the history of mankind cannot wait that's what I that's what I said I have seen it and uh, and my guess is your viewing of Shazam: Fury of the Gods was not served by you seeing like that one movie day after, after you saw John Wick. John right? It was after literally the right? day yeah. after. It yeah. was literally yeah. the day yeah. after. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yes, <laughs> that'd be rough. I, that'd be rough. That'd be rough. Come down, probably. I can imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, well, anyway. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the end of the day, I don't want to say anything about John Wick Four right now because we will be talking about John Wick yeah, Four. Yeah. 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 But yeah. But at the end of the day. Uh, it still is really impressive that David Sandberg made a movie. Thank you so much for watching this video of the Filmcast. Check out these other videos that we have available and be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get other videos from us in the future. You can also go to thefilmcast.com to catch all of our audio podcast versions of all of our episodes. And support this podcast at patreon.com slash filmpodcast where you can sign up for ad-free episodes and exclusive After Darks. Thanks so much to everyone who makes the Filmcast possible.